So let me quickly go through uh, the important points of what elevator pitch is and then we will go on to uh, seeing summary writing for accessible uh, sci science writing. Okay. So this lecture was given by Professor Sahana Murthy. She is unfortunately not there here today. She is on a conference. So what is an elevator pitch? Okay. So an elevator pitch is something that is said in a very short 30 seconds to 2 minutes interval. Typically the time that you would travel from one floor to another floor in a lift. Suppose you are going in a lift and you are, you happen to meet the vice chancellor in the lift and the vice chancellor is asking you, what do you do? All right, And then you go on saying blah, 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 which the uh, vice chancellor is able to make out. All right. So here are few tips on what elevator pitch could have. The elevator pitch is typically used in several of this context. Suppose you go to a conference and you need to introduce yourself very briefly and tell quickly the talk uh, poster is about or if, if you want to tell your, you want to prepare your PhD students for an interview, how do you help them do it? Or if you want to prepare your students for an interview for a job. Okay? So these are different contexts where you want people to be able to articulate the work, the technical work. It's, it's a technical work that you have done, your student has done and they want to articulate it in a very concise form. So this is a small uh, example to uh, give you what an elevator pitch is and what it is not. Okay. So imagine that your student comes to you with the following elevator pitch that she plans to use in an interview. Uh, she has written this ready and she is coming and showing it to you. Uh, please help me correct this. So how are you going to help correct? your student's elevator pitch. Is this good enough? Does it uh, reinforce her uh, abilities? Will, her, will this get her her job? So here is what she says. She says, I graduated from XYZ college in 2012 with courses in marketing and research methods. I work for my college annual festival team on their publicity. I have spent the last three years in market research for ABC company, I want to move to an interesting platform and use my skills. I am going to reset the hand raises and uh, I invite comments on this. Uh, we are joined by Professor Guru who also uh, took many of the lectures in um, IIT Bombay. So uh, if you are ready, I am going to call on uh, Jawaharlal Nehru National College. And tell us, Jawaharlal Nehru College, uh, whether this is a strong pitch? Yeah, I think it is not a strong pitch because it reflects a CV. Uh, the USP of the candidate uh, needs to be explained. Okay. The USP of that candidate, he needs to put it across saying, uh, I am a team player. I was a uh, uh, guy or lady who has organized. Uh, uh, programs in the college and that would be an asset. So USP has to be marketed. All right. Okay. Thank you. We will go on to somebody else. Federal Institute of Science and Technology. I don't think it's actually a really a strong pitch because uh, when it comes to like he just the person just say like says like uh, I worked with the ABC company like uh, in in the market field or the market research. But actually, the person should actually concentrate on what he specifically did over there in the market market research, something which uh, really benefited the company. So uh, just get a feeling is that this is more or less like a CV presentation where you you vaguely say I worked with a company for three years, I worked with one another, um, I did this in in the in the college. So it has to be explained specifically with the company where that person worked. He has to actually he or she has to actually highlight what kind of a specific thing he did over there which benefited that company. I think that will give a good leverage for that person. 
Okay. Now, uh, thank you very much. We have two uh, good inputs. Now, let me uh, show you another example uh, which has been slightly improved from the original. Original one is given at, at the bottom and this is improved. Okay, I am going to read you the improved one. I have expertise in research design, modeling and data analysis through three years of market research experience. As a student of XYZ College, I developed a tool using Facebook that was adopted by my college annual festival team. I would like to create marketing platforms for nonprofit organizations. Now, it is the same content, the same person, there are lot of common facts stated in both the things, but slightly the stress has been uh, different and little more have been said. So, I invite comments on the revised pitch. Okay, let us go to uh, Vidya Pratishthan. One is more improved one and it is more technically written as uh, she is interviewed. So, this is the more specific which is uh, expected uh, by the interviewers. So, she has mentioned her college uh, name, her expertise, her area as well as the new technology she has adopted to improve the publicity. Okay, thank you. We will go to Roland Institute of Technology. Sir, actually here uh, the candidate is showing himself as a how much uh, efficient and technically and uh, what he has done for the uh, like non-profitable organization so that uh, I think it is a strong piece sir like uh, the previous one. Okay, thank you. So, now what we will do is a small exercise, we have got two good comments and uh, how to improve. Uh, now, what we will do is I am going to switch back to our work, okay. Now, let us say this is the work that you have done and then you are met with the vice chancellor or the director of your college or university and they ask you, hello, how are you? what do you do? Okay? And you are going to tell them about this work which is this monkey study. Pretend that you are a cognitive neurobiologist and you have done this work and you are going to tell the vice chancellor very quickly about 30 seconds to a minute which is about oh, two sentences maybe or three four, three, four sentences at most. Do not use the same words, words written here, but convey the idea and impress upon your uh, vice chancellor. Okay? Take about uh, 10 minutes, uh, 5 minutes and one, once you are ready, please raise your hands. Uh, I am going to uh, ask people if you are ready. This is looks like Amrita School of Engineering. My pitch would be currently I am working on a project to prove that human and monkeys are of the same origin for which I conducted an experiment to know uh, whether monkeys can distinguish sizes as human beings do. And it was observed that monkeys responded in the similar way to human beings on color cues and selection of number of elements. This establishes that they are of the same origin. Okay, uh, that is reasonably good. Thank you very much. KLE Institute, Hubli. Uh, so, my pitch would be, I am a cognitive uh, neurobiologist. I have done extensive research on monkeys for the last five years. I have developed an algorithm which exhibits the cognitive skills of a monkey and which can be related uh, to a human uh, brain and it is currently being used in XYZ Research Center. Do it started off well, but after when, afterwards it became little too technical and I think the Last second last sentence was not maybe can be improved a little more. We have another version of this in our center, sir. Can we present it? Yes, please. Currently, I am working in the area of biological science. So, we have experimented and observed that uh, monkeys responded the same behavior as the humans do. They can uh, distinguish the size, uh, the proportionality of the sizes as humans do. Okay. So, you think your pro uh, vice chancellor will give you a promotion? Probably no, sir. <laughs> no, I think yes. Thank you. Sushila Devi Bansal. 
I am a uh, PhD uh, research scholar and uh, presently uh, I am working on uh, similarity, similarity uh, in monkeys and humans for numerical judgments and we find that and uh, or we observe that there is a link between humans and monkeys. Yeah, it's a fairly good summary but uh, probably that humans and monkeys share uh, is uh, known fairly widely but uh, the specific aspect with respect to numerical counting and, and these aspects so you can probably emphasize on that uh, which was the sentence that you had before the last sentence so i think yeah it's a fairly good summary thank you okay let's move on to ldrp institute of technology and research uh, sir i am mayank barot pursuing research study uh, which is dealing with monkeys behavior identification size wise it is taken as a granted that monkeys are our immediate predator who react more precisely like humans in the numerical and color identification, which also states they are close in met with humans. So whether they can distinguish the object size-wise or not, that opens the study area. In progress to that, it is found that uh, monkeys do respond alike, like humans, which supports the evolutionary theory as well as it opens the further study area of a uh, monkey's uh, psychological behavior. Okay, this is uh, ME Society IMCC Pune. Yes, please call your Vice Chancellor on board. I am Jyoti and recently I finished with the research related to monkeys uh, and uh, how monkey thinks about uh, numer numbers and we wanted to find out whether there is any similarity between thinking process related to number, their size and everything with human beings and interestingly we found out that uh, there is a similarity between uh, thinking process related to numbers of monkeys and human beings and I think this will help you us for further studies of, uh, to find out origin of uh, monkeys and human beings whether it is same or not that means it will help us. Thank you sir. Okay, very good, excellent. So, uh, the next time when you do, you please record what you said and then write it down as text. That might be a better way to start off your elevator pitch. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, we will move on to the next topic. So, now we have met the Vice Chancellor, now we are going to a nearby school. Okay, we are going to a nearby school and we are going to meet uh, uh, 8 standard students. Okay. Now again we are going to do this pretending work and you have to write a paragraph maybe or speak out a paragraph to 8 standard students and everybody in the classroom have to pretend as though you are 8 standard students and you have to ask the person who is presenting trivial questions. Okay? So the person who is presenting has to come and pretend as though they are talking to 8 standard students and the others in the classroom please pretend as though you are 8 standard students and if you do not understand a particular term ask them to explain it in your language not in the language of their research. Okay? So let us take about 5 minutes and then we will call upon colleges who are ready. I just want to recollect a few uh, points of this lecture which we uh, saw in IIT Bombay X, accessible science writing. I want you to use some of the clues that were given here to make uh, science accessible to a wider audience. So when we mean accessible, we mean to non-specialists. So till now you are probably talking to very specialists in your area where you wrote an abstract, then you met the vice chancellor who is also technical in a way. But now you are going to meet non-specialists, school students, they could be policy makers or bureaucrats, okay, a general public including your family and parents and so on. So what are the important aspects? Again the whole thing that you are saying you need to just convey only one fact. Okay, it has to be very clear that important fact has to come and then uh, you need to be there are three important elements. One is the clarity and the vigor. So what attracted you to do this particular problem? something that people can relate to okay? and uh, human elements is something which people can relate to in the in forms of 
could be a human act, it is something from your experience. So, some of these elements if you include in a general science writing or science uh, speech which you are going to give now, that will help you connect to the general audience. So, uh, we want you to uh, include some of these clarity, vigor and humanity. So, try to bring these three elements in the talk that you are going to address to the students. KIT College of Engineering. Since there are studies going on in various countries that human beings are evolved from monkeys. So, we need to prove this. So, what we have to we have did to prove this that we have trained some monkeys to arrange the numbers in ascending or descending order on the given color that is if they have if they are Madam, given I don't understand a blue what cube, cube is. So, they have to arrange the larger number first and the smaller number for if the red cube is given the smaller number should be arranged first. But uh, by our studies we have did this where the monkey showed that they can arrange the number by the given clue cube. So, they have uh, so, by this study they have proved that, that monkeys can think like human when the problem is or any situation is there in front of them like we human beings think. Thank you ma'am. Ma'am, but you if you go to a classroom or if you have children at home, is this how you will explain to them? Uh, in more softer and milder language. So, I have a daughter who is so four years old ma'am, I do not think she will listen to this. The only thing that will work is if I tell her a story or if I make her involved, right. So, if you go to a classroom before telling about ascending, descending, can you not ask them give four numbers, ask them to arrange in ascending and then ask the question do you think a monkey will be able to do it? We have to give some example. Right? Suppose I say that okay, I have four numbers 10, 8, 7, and 11, and ask your classroom to arrange it in ascending order. Okay, 8th standard kids, so they should be able to do it. After they do, then you can ask them, Do you think a monkey will be able to do it? So, you, you understand what I am saying? You are delivering something. But I do not think 8th standard kids will listen to you if you start delivering like that unless you involve them. And some people, some, some kids might say that yes monkeys will be able to do, some kids might say that no monkeys will not be able to do and then you can ask them more interesting questions, how do I know that the monkey can arrange or not arrange, right. So, I think you, you have the information but the way you put across for children or for an audience like that should be more interactive or if you are only going to talk then it should be like a story. So I thought that, that uh, in a limited uh, sentence you have to explain them. So, I curtail my uh, sentences within a small sentence. But, but I spoke only four sentences. I said arrange this in ascending order. Now, do you think monkeys will be able to do it? Then you can say okay, I have done research which shows that monkeys do it. Not more than three sentences. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Silicon Institute of Technology. Come forward and face the audience, please. You are a school teacher and they are all your children. Are you listening to me, all of you? Yes. Now, I will explain you. I will tell you a story first. You must be aware that uh, in the Ramayana, when uh, Ramchandra was building the bridge to uh, rescue Sita, he had used human, he had used the monkeys must be aware the monkeys were asked to build uh, the bridge with the stones yes and as we all know that the monkeys have been uh, considered as the immediate ancestors of human beings so based on this knowledge we conducted an experiment uh, we tried to prove that monkeys can behave and distinguish between large and small units larger and smaller numbers the monkeys were given training to do so and were seen that they behaved in a similar manner as the human beings. They were able to distinguish between larger and smaller numbers 
when the color cues were given, the color cues of red and blue color, so they behaved in a similar manner. They were able to distinguish as to which is the larger number and which is the smaller number when those colors were shown to them. So will that be okay? Thank you, ma'am. The, the initial part was okay, but I thought you are going to continue in the same vein. You, you started off with a story. So I thought you are going to continue with the story saying that Rama said bring the big stone. Will the monkey know which is the big stone? Monkey will not be able to say which is the big stone. Whenever you say big stone, monkey will show a color. Now can this do? Or something like this. I mean, the dramatization that starts after a while became non-dramatic and you could see that yourself because you have to refer back to your notes. Thank you, thank you. You started off very well, it was nice. So you just need to improve on the along the same lines. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So this is MES Pillai Institute. Hello, good afternoon students. Uh, do you remember the story we heard in the childhood, uh, monkey and the cap seller? Yes, what happened there? What a monkey started imitating whatever the cap seller was doing and cap seller was able to get all his caps back. Do you think if the cap seller had started arranging his caps in a from a bigger size to smaller or smaller to bigger, would monkey would have done that? You think yes? And also we know that we hear from that our ancestors were monkey. So now there is, uh, I have done a very small study whether the behavioral pattern of monkeys and human beings are similar or not. And study is done which shows, yes, monkeys can, are able to distinguish between the larger number and the smaller number. Do you think it's possible monkey will be doing this? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Very nice. Very nice. Medicap. Good morning, students. This is Professor Akriti Shastri. I have, uh, I am a faculty of life sciences in Medicap's Institute of Technology and Science. And I have been involved into doing a lot of research work related to animals and human beings. And I think it might interest you to know that just recently I conducted a research to find out the similarities between the brain of monkeys and human beings. And this was what I found. Uh, the result was that as human beings, the monkeys are also able to distinguish between the numbers uh, starting from, you know, the lower numbers to higher numbers. And this uh, was done in my experiment by using color cues. So if I gave a blue color to the monkey, the monkey was able to uh, distinguish the number in a higher order and with a red color, it gave me a smaller number. So this was my finding. I hope that uh, this might have, uh, you know, generated some interest in you. Thank you. You said you prepared some animation? No, no. I said I conducted an experiment. But when you present it to school kids, there should be some other elements which will make them involved in what you are saying, right? So what was the element you had in mind to... I thought it was just uh, for an elevator pitch and how do I introduce myself and then address the students of 8th class. So I, I told you initially that uh, this was the format how I prepared. So, so can, can you change now the format and think that you are addressing some, say your niece or nephew who is in say 6th standard and the girl asks, uh, okay auntie what do you do? Will you prepare for the talk or will you just say what you do? Let's not restrict to English language. So you are free to speak in uh, any language you're comfortable with, other than English. If you are comfortable in any other language, as in maybe Hindi or any other. So uh, this is a uh, instruction given to the other uh, centers. So if anybody is willing to speak in your own mother tongue, and there are people who know that tongue uh, around you, you can use that to explain. Sometimes, if you are explaining in your own mother tongue. Such concepts come out much more simpler and then you can translate that into English. So let us try a, a round of mother tongue speaking of general science and let us say if you can simplify the concepts. The nice thing is if you have not studied science in your mother tongue, you cannot use technical words. 
and it will by default be simple. So, let us try that out. And, and you should not use English words like Q when you are speaking in Hindi. No English so words. No English words. So, can you do it in Hindi without using English words? Good morning, students. My name is Akriti Shastri and I am in Medicaps College, I am in the College of Jeev Vigyan. And I have done a lot of things on different ways, on different ways on animals. And I have tried to know that the brain of animals is so much in the brain of animals. And in this case, I have done a lot of things on the brain of animals. As you all know, our brain is the brain of animals, which is the brain of animals. So, the brain of animals is the brain of animals. इंसानों से बहुत कुछ मिलता जुलता है और इसी तथ्य को स्थापित करने के लिए मैंने यह ये प्रयोग किया है इस प्रयोग में आ, मैंने ये पाया कि क्या बंदर भी इंसानों की तरह से आ, संख्याओं को पहचानते हैं क्या वे बड़ी संख्या और छोटी संख्या में आ, कोई अंतर स्थापित कर पाते हैं या नहीं और आ, मेरा जो ये अध्ययन था उससे ये बात निकल कर ये तथ्य सामने आया कि हाँ बंदर भी इंसानों की तरह संख्याओं को आ, अलग अलग रख सकते हैं वो पहचान सकते हैं कि कौन सी बड़ी संख्या है कौन सी छोटी संख्या है और ये मैंने किया था उनको अलग अलग रंगों को देख करके तो जब मैंने बंदरों को लाल रंग दिखाया तो उन्होंने बड़ी संख्या उठाई और जब मैंने बंदरों को नीला रंग दिखाया तो उन्होंने छोटी संख्या उठाई तो इससे ये बात स्थापित हो गई ये तथ्य स्थापित हो गया कि बंदरों का दिमाग इंसानों की तरह बहुत कुछ मिलता जुलता है और इसीलिए हम लोग भी हमारे पूर्वज बंदर ही रहे हैं ये बात तय हो जाती है थैंक यू मैम या थैंक यू वेरी मच तो वालसन सोलापुर गुड मॉर्निंग सगे कशे आहत तुम्हें मजे बर बर है क्या तुम जहाँ समोर आता है दो नंबर आए थे मंजे टेन ओके ही फिंगर दाखोली मंजे टेन आए एंड थम मंजे ट अतः सांगा मला कौन-ता मोटा नंबर है अतना थम मोटा है का है मोटा है थम कस का है थम मोटा है कारण का तो नंबर का या है ट्वेल एंड ट्वेल इज़ ग्रेटर दैन टेन ओके ट्वेल हाँ नंबर टेन पेक्षा मोटा है अन्हे ऑलरेडी अपन स्टडी के ले ला है पन एक महत्वाची गोष्ट भी तुम्हाला सांगू इच्छी थे का ही गोष्ट सांगू शक्ता का कौन-ता नंबर मोटा है यानी कौन-ता नंबर छोटा है अतः तुम जा सकते हैं जो डोके एक प्रश्न उद्भव था सेल कि बाप रे आता माकड़ा ना कैसे करना रहता है ना तर अक्षर ओलक सुधा नहीं है कहा टेन दहा मोटा है का बारा मापन का है के लिए ला है दोन माकड़ा ना छान पे की ट्रेन के लिए तो ना दो अतः सगाई निकट लक्ष्य दिया पन तुम्ही माकड़ नवे बरा का आर अंग कौन-ता है जो मी घातले ला है नीरा अनि है दोन तुम जा समोर नंबर आहे ऑलरेडी आदित्य मी तुम्हाला संगीत ले ला है हाँ मंजे कौन-ता नंबर है अनि हाँ अतः तुम्ही संगा मला कौन-ता नंबर तुम्ही संगना है ड्रेस माजा कौन-ता रंगा था है है नाही माकड़न से चुकले ला है ट्रेनिंग चुकले लिया है माकड़न जी निर्यार रंगा जो आ है तो कशा साथी आ है मोठ्या नंबर साथी हाँ आ है दाहा अनि हाँ आ है बारा मनीरा रंगा दाखोला मंजे माकड़ा निकाय दाखोला पाई जे हे सो दिस है हे मंजे काय आ है तुमसा मोठा नंबर ठीक है मंजे कायले तुम्हाला सोपा प्रयोग के लिए अपन माकड़न वर अनि दोन रंगन में तन्ना लगेज का अलग का छोटा नंबर अनि मोटा नंबर अपन कसर संगाई जाए थे का अलग का सगरना ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच एक्सेलेंट तो डी पॉइंट जस्ट टू रिएट्रेट इस डेट सी व्हेन यू आर स्पीकिंग इन योर मदर टंग यू आर नेचुरली स and uh, it also first of all makes ideas clear in your own mind. So now when you go and meet your vice chancellor, you probably may be able to tell it in a much more confident way now since you are able to explain this so nicely in your own mother tongue. So let's take a couple of more who are ready. RVS Tamil Nadu. 
ஓகே குரங்குல குரங்கு பத்தி உங்களுக்கு எல்லாம் தெரியுமா நம்ம எல்லாம் குரங்குல இருந்து வந்திருக்கோமா இல்ல வந்து குரங்கு நம்மள இருந்து வந்திருக்கா நம்மளுக்கு தெரியாது அதுக்கு முன்னாடி நம்பர்ஸ் எப்படி எல்லாம் ஐடென்டிஃபை பண்ணுது நம்பர்ஸ் பத்தி நீங்க என்ன நினைக்கிறீங்க நம்பர் என்ன ஞாபகம் வரும் மேக்ஸ் தான் ஞாபகம் வரும் நம்பர்ல வந்து சின்னது எது பெருசு எதுன்னு எப்படி ஐடென்டிஃபை பண்ணுவோம் எப்படி பண்ணுவோம் சின்னதெல்லாம் வந்து ரைட் ஹேண்ட் சைடும் பெருசெல்லாம் வந்து லெஃப்ட் சைடும் அப்படி தான் நம்ம கொண்டு போவோம் அதே மாதிரி நம்மளுக்கு முன்னாடி வந்த குரங்குகளும் ஒரே மாதிரி பெருசெல்லாம் ஒரு சைடும் சின்னதெல்லாம் ஒரு சைடும் கொண்டு போயிருது அதில் வந்து பெரு சைட் பெருசெல்லாம் இருக்கிற ஒரு சைடு வந்து ப்ளூ கலராகவும் சின்னதெல்லாம் இருக்கிற ஒரு சைடு வந்து ரெட் கலராகவும் இருக்குது இதுதான் வந்து கண்டுபிடிச்சது maybe you can try it today with your uh, children in your campus or anywhere in your uh, locality and try it out if they can understand yeah one one more thing which was there in uh, the slides also is that uh, sometimes the personal anecdotes are also nice yeah we have lots of uh, monkeys on campus and they do lots of interesting stuff okay so so for example if i would talk about monkeys i will tell about some incident that happened like how they came and took all the bread or all the fruits and how they formed a chain and the youngest monkey went inside and it was pausing on to the others so something like that which interests uh, you, so so some personal anecdote of that type uh, which is humorous or which is interesting or curious is always nice hmm? thank you ma'am san francis मुंबई अच्छा आप काम करते हैं आज कुछ ऐसी चीज के बारे में बात करते हैं जिसमें शायद हम सभी का इंटरेस्ट हो आप में से कितने लोगों के घर में पेट्स हैं पेट्स कुत्ता बिल्ली म्याओ वेवर नहीं अच्छा चलो एक बात करते हैं अगर मैं जानवरों की बात करूं और मैं कहूं किसी एक के बारे में सोचो जो बिल्कुल हम जैसा हो दिमाग में क्या आएगा एनी आंसर चलो बंदर डेफिनेटली दिखने में नहीं हरकतों की बात हो रही है अब हरकतों में भी एक बात आई इस बंदे की एक कहानी है शायरी वगैरह सुनी है एनीवे anyway, हम सब जब छोटे थे हमने कहानी सुनी कि दो बिल्लियां थी सुनी सुनाई सी लग रही है दो बिल्लियां थी वो किस बात पे झगड़ रही थी रोटी पे और आए वहां पे बंदरू बंदर ने क्या किया बंदर ने कहा मैं जरा आपकी मदद कर देता हूं ठीक है आप झगड़ो मत बराबर बराबर हिस्सा कर देता हूं ठीक है फिर हुआ क्या लेकिन बिल्लियों को रोटी मिली बंदर ने क्या किया पूरा लेकर गया कभी एक साइड काटा नहीं ये थोड़ा ज्यादा है मैं आपको बराबर करके देता हूं फिर दूसरी तरफ अब डेफिनेटली ये तो कोई बंदर ही होगा जो मानेगा कि बंदर ही हरकत कर सकता है कि इक्वल इक्वल कर दे एकदम बराबर कर दे सही है अब मैं जरा बात बदलती हूं सही नहीं है हमने एक छोटा सा स्टडी कंडक्ट किया जहां पे मैं आपको कुछ अलग बताऊं बंदरों को आप मानेंगे नहीं एक्चुअली ये पता है कि क्या बड़ा और क्या छोटा ये स्टडी शायद जब हुई थी तो हमारे ये बंदरू मियाँ उसमें शायद नहीं होंगे इसलिए उनसे गड़बड़ हो गई पर हमारी स्टडी कहती है अगर इन्हें सच में सिखाया जाए उन्हें एक्चुअली बताया जाए कहाँ पे कुछ बड़ा कहाँ पे छोटा और ट्रेन किया जाए यहाँ पे हम लोगों ने रंगों का इस्तेमाल किया था बड़े के लिए नीला छोटे के लिए लाल और हो गया कमाल ये एक्चुअली ट्रेनिंग के दरमियान सीख गए कि बड़ा छोटा का फर्क क्या है तो यही एक चीज है जो मैं आपके साथ बताना चाहती थी थैंक यू वेरी गुड थैंक यू एक्सलेंट वेरी गुड राजा बापू नमस्कार तुम्हारा सगैंक महित है कि आज आप जे का शिकार आहोत ये का माकड़ा बदल है माकड़ मजे तुम्हारा सगैंक महित कि माकड़ हा जो प्राणी है तो खूब आसा दंग दंगेखोर मस्तीखोर कि बयाच लोक बयाच विशेषता दिल्ली है कि बयाच प्रकार विशेष न लवले माकड़ना तो एक दिवस का कि सग्या माकड़ना अं वाटल कि आप इंजिनियर वहाँच है अपन इंजिनियर वहाँच है मग इंजिनियर वहाँच है मटल वीपुढ़ फ्त दोन ऑप्शन होते एक मजे आर आई टी इलामपुर आई आई टी बॉम्बे कस आता जे माकड़ होती 
त्या माकडांसमोर फक्त दोनच सेंटर एक म्हणजे आर आय टी आपलं कॉलेज किंवा आपण म्हणू सांगलीचं कॉलेज आणि आय आय टी बॉम्बे आय आय टी बॉम्बेला लाल कलर दिलेला होता तर सांगली कॉलेजला निळा कलर दिलेला होता त्या माकडांना हे शिकवण्यात आलेलं होतं आधी की लाल कलर म्हणजेच डेंजर आय आय टी बॉम्बे इज डेंजर आणि निळा कलर आर आय टी सेफ्टी झालं तसंच त्यांच्या लिडरनं ऑर्डर दिली की आपण सांगलीला जायचं आहे म्हणजे कुठे आहे निळ्या कलरकडे जायचं आहे आणि झालं तसंच सगळेजण इकडे झाले म्हणजे यातून काय प्रूफ झालं की त्यांना आधी कोणीतरी सांगितलेलं होतं की निळा कलर म्हणजेच सेफ्टी मग ते आय आय टी बॉम्बेकडे गेली नाही कुठे गेलीत सांगलीला गेलीत मग यावरून काय समजलं की माकडांना रंगाचं ज्ञान असतं ओके ठीक आहे तुम्हाला काय समजलं ओके थँक्यू इट वॉज ओके बट द मेन पॉईंट कम थ्रू इट इज अबाउट नंबर्स अँड नॉट अबाउट कलर्स दॅट्स फाईन दॅट्स ओके मे बी युअर टेलिंग अ डिफरंट स्टोरी द आयडिया वॉज टू कन्वे अ पॉईंट विच इज गुड थँक यू व्हेरी मच हा गांधी इन्स्टिट्यूट भुवनेश्वर उदाहरण धाबा उपर झाड़ उपर गे गे आज काल अपने वसवाट करो शहर में रोड पर घनी वाहन थकी एक्सिडेंट हो तो एम विषय हूँ आज तुम एक बात कहीश वंदरा आम तो चूंकि अपने वंदरा कही एमने भगवान तरीके पूजिए छे कई रीते हनुमान जी रायण में एक प्रसंग सरस प्रसंग कहेल जेनी अंदर जयरे राम और रावण वे युद्ध तेरे अभिमन्यु भरत ने एक तीर मरु आ मेघदूत मेघदूते जय भरत ने तीर मरु भरत बेहोश थी गया बेभान थी गया तेरे वैद्यजीए कहू हनुमान जी जाओ और संजीवनी बोटी लैने आओ ते समय हनुमान जी उड़न खटोला जेम उपड़ा हिमालय पहुंची वड़ा त्या जाइने एमने खबर न पड़ी कि कई वस्तु संजीवनी बूटी हो संजीवनी बूटी है आ गया पी अमने कहीं गतागम न पड़ी तो अंत आखो पहाड़ ऊंचो कर वैद्यजी समक्ष ला दीदो कही दीद मैंने आमा तो खबर न पड़ी कि कई वस्तु जड़ी बूटी है क्यों पहाड़ है क्यों घास है तमने जो योग्य लगे लई लो संजीवनी बूटी आम एज बात वैद्यजीए अपने रायण में कहवा कि हनुमान ने खबर नहीं पड़ी कि कई जड़ीबूटी कहवाई कई घास है कई पहाड़ है 
એ જ વસ્તુ એ લઈને પછી આપણે વિજ્ઞાનમાં જોયું કે ડાર્વીને પણ કહ્યું છે ડાર્વીને ઉત્ક્રાંતિ વાત તો તમે જોયો સાંભળ્યો છે ને કે વાંદરો આપણા પૂર્વજો છે જે વાત રામાયણમાં કહેલી છે એ જ વાત ડાર્વીને એના ડાર્વીન ઇવોલ્યુશન થિયરી ડાર્વીન ઉત્ક્રાંતિ વાતમાં પણ એ જ વાત કહી અને એ જ વાત આપણે આજે પણ ભારતમાં હનુમાનજીને મંદિરમાં પૂજીએ જ છીએ આ વાતને લઈને એક પ્રયોગ ઘણા પ્રયોગો થયા વિજ્ઞાન શાળામાં ઘણા પ્રયોગો થયા અને એ પ્રયોગોમાં અમે એવું સાબિત કર્યું છે કે વાંદરો ખરેખર કઈ વસ્તુ નાની હોય છે કઈ વસ્તુ મોટી હોય છે એની ગતાગમ ખરેખર પડે છે તો હવે આજ પછી વાંદરાઓને ક્યારે ગાંડા નહીં કહેતા મજા આવી ને થેન્ક યુ વેરી મચ ઓકે થેન્ક યુ So we have a last college, Sona College of Technology. See, what are you doing? Do you know the wheat and wheat and wheat? See, what do you know the wheat and wheat? I don't know the wheat and wheat. Do you know the wheat and wheat? Do you know the wheat and wheat? See, let's go to the wheat. Do you know the wheat and wheat? 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 Do you know the wheat? என்ன <laughs> அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ண முடியுது அதே மாதிரி குரங்குகளுக்கும் தெரியும் நம்பர் எது ஸ்மால் நம்பர் எது லார்ஜ் நம்பர் அப்படின்றது தெரியும் அது எப்படி தெரிஞ்சுக்கும் தெரியுமா அவங்களுக்கு கலர்ஸ் யூஸ் பண்ணி ஸோ ரெட் கலராக இருந்துச்சு சிவப்பு கலராக இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னா அது ஸ்மால் நம்பர்னு ஐடென்டிஃபை பண்ணும் ப்ளூ கலராக இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் அதை வந்து லார்ஜ் நம்பராக அது ஐடென்டிஃபை பண்ணும் ஸோ குரங்குகளுக்கும் நம்மளுக்கும் சில செயல்கள் ஆக்ஷன்ஸ் வந்து ஒரே மாதிரி இருக்கும் இது எங்களுடைய ஆராய்ச்சியிலேருந்து நாங்கள் ஜெனரல்வர்க் <laughs> how do we identify whether the article is a letter original or review okay i will address the second question which is easier a letter is a short communication it is usually something which has to be published in a very uh, small period of time because it is very important and usually the turnover time for a letter is about uh, weeks to a couple of months so it comes within this period so first of all it is short letter is also called as a short communication so it's usually about 3 uh, to 4 pages most of the journals explicitly identify letters as letters like uh, the example that we saw today is uh, two articles we saw from nature were all uh, were both letters in some other journals it is called a short communication so just by looking at the paper uh, it's usually four pages two three graphs some 15 to 20 references or everything is com- compact so there is not they won't be detailed methodology section they won't be detailed simulation section and so on only the main result will be there all the remaining thing might go into another detailed paper or to a supplementary article so that is letter a review article on the other hand is very comprehensive there is no a new original work that is being reported so it is like a literature survey of what has happened over the last 5 uh, years 10 years and so on so maybe 5 years back somebody else wrote a review article and now you are writing another review article so you have collected all the references in this last 5 years so in review article typically the size is very large total number of pages can run to 20 30 and so on and the number of references can go nearly about 100 and if you read the paragraph the first abstract or the in uh, the introduction paragraph you can make out that they explicitly explicitly use a sentence that here 
we review the recent developments and so on. The abstract itself will not be in the same structure as we discussed today. They want, there is no problem, there is no one problem statement and there is no one result. In a review article, you will see that they tell these are the broad areas and these are the different aspects that we have reviewed. So, it comes explicitly. Original article is like, if you read the abstract, the two examples that we saw today, you can make out from the abstract that there is a new contribution. And that is in between these both, the number of pages is also less, uh, less than the review article, but more than the letter. The review number of references is also about uh, 30 and odd, 30, 40 and odd. Uh, to your first question, I think it is a, um, you cannot address in the same class, you just need to pace it at a medium level and you need to give uh, a special attention to those people. That is my opinion. I will ask uh, Guru to give his opinion. It is very difficult if you have a classroom which consists of people with a different uh, uh, pace of learning. Uh, there are many suggestions that are given. Some is that you will split the group class into groups and you will give different uh, jobs to different groups. Um, but like Suntar said, you have to decide what is the minimum that everybody has to learn. And even the slowest learner has to learn that much. That would be your main aim. And in the process, you do not want the others uh, to get bored. So, you will give them other extra work or other projects or other things that they have to do at the same time so that you can concentrate on them. But many a times it might not be possible for logistic reasons. So, so those cases it is difficult. Uh, but there are things that are possible. Uh, these days they talk about um, yeah, the, the classroom is where things will be done. For example, you will tell a priori your students what is it that they have to read. And after reading they will come to the class. In the class you will give a tutorial or a problem to the students. You will make them solve. Now, if you take this approach, then you can make up problems which are at several difficult levels. So, you can give the first problem to everybody. Whoever finishes uh, takes up the next problem and whoever finishes that takes up the next problem and so on. But uh, all the students will at least have done the first problem or first two problems. So, this is a kind of approach that you can try if it is possible for you. Why do not we... Uh, reduce the examination period for fast learner uh, and uh, the ex uh, examination period for slow learner? So, learning and examination are two different things. Okay. So, examination somebody needs more time or less time might have got nothing to do with the learning speeds. Somebody's working speed might be different. Huh? But it consumes the uh, uh, time period for <laughs> fast learner, examination period is that is what I am telling. Somebody might learn very fast. For example, somebody might uh, know, learn a concept in half an hour. But that does not mean that they will also work very fast. Ha. We, we put our syllabus in modular system, hmm? then it is possible to take examination for uh, all the students. Right. So, fast learner can complete their uh, graduation in, instead of four years, they complete their graduation in two oh, yes. years. Yeah, yeah. Many, many parts of the world people do that. Uh, but, yeah, for whatever reason that is not what is allowed in India. Uh, because we have certain number of years for every degree. Students have to do that many years. But yes, that is possible. But I do not know in the current uh, system that we have whether you can manage that. My question is, is to you, uh, Guru Rajan sir. Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I am having some question for you sir. Uh, that. Uh, as uh, you also gave a lecture on uh, quizzers, IIT, um, the, the series, video series which we have attended, on that you uh, spoke, uh, gave a lecture on writing. Okay, yes. I mean, I'm having some doubt in the sense that when we uh, go to write an abstract writing of a research paper, right. we simply, uh, we have to uh, go for the practice. I mean, we have to spend a whole day or through three days, five days or seven days on that abstract writing. Are there any authentic website would you suggest at your personal level so I can practice abstract writing? I, I do not know many. Uh, there are courses which are available online. Uh, you can try Coursera. 
uh, where you can go through the course in about a semester's time, where you will get to do lots of uh, exercises and your colleagues who take the course will correct it for you. But I am not aware of too many websites which will help you in this process. There might be there, but, but I am not aware of them. Uh, hello, Walson. I have got two questions regarding the journal paper. While writing an abstract or in the abstract, can I make a reference of the IS code or ASTM? Uh, that is first thing. And uh, second thing is uh, regarding the references. Generally, the references are uh, uh, given in the literature part. But suppose in the result part, I want to utilize some reference. Then can I uh, use the same number there? Because in the journal papers, whatever I have seen, the numbers are never repeated or one number is not given in the letter part. So is it OK or then what should I do? Suppose I want to reuse the reference of the previously made, uh, uh, which is I have made previously in the result part. What should I do, sir? OK. To answer your first question, can you refer uh, numbers like ASTM or ISO numbers in the abstract? So uh, there is nothing that stops, there is no rule that says you should or you should not. You decide what is the importance of putting a number. If you think such a number, see what is an abstract, what is the purpose of an abstract? An abstract is freely available, an abstract is indexed by all search engines. Now, if you think giving a particular number is important for the searching or is important for somebody who is reading the paper, so, so, so everybody first reads the abstract, they decide if they want to read the paper and then only they download the paper. Now, it is your decision to decide whether you want to give this additional ISTM number. If you give that number, will it? help some search engine or somebody, you think somebody will use the number to search, ISTM number to search or somebody will use ISO number to search or if you, it will help them download the paper because you have given a particular ISO number. So it is a call that you can take. The answer to your second question, I think you have probably misunderstood thinking that the numbers in, in when you put in the text for references, they come only once. No, it is not. They can come any number of times. Usually when you write a story, it comes like uh, in the sequence in which the uh, references are cited, the same sequence references are numbered. So you are free to use it any number of times, even within the text, not necessarily the conclusion. Definitely within the conclusion or any other part, you can use numbers. What is not recommended is using the same numbers in abstract. Because using a number in abstract does not carry any meaning. Uh, abstract has to be read on its own. In an abstract, if you put numbers, they don't know what that number refers to because they have not downloaded the paper. But within the text or within the con anywhere in the conclusion, appendix, anything, you can use and you should use the same numbers repeatedly. Thank you. My question was, uh, there are many journals available on the internet. How to select a proper journal for publication of uh, the research paper? See, one of the things that you can do if you don't know anything is to find out who are the publishers. Uh, some of the journals are from professional societies like Materials Research Society publishers, American Chemical Society publishers, American Ceramic Society publishers and European Physical Society publishers, American Physical Society publishers. So you can look at the publisher. If it is a reputed association for the professionals, then it is a good journal. So that is a rule of thumb. It is not necessary that all of them have the same impact <coughs> factor, but generally if they are published like Royal Society or something, then it is good. This is one thing that you can look up. Okay, Are there any professional societies which are publishing in my area? Second thing you can look up is there, that there are companies like Wiley or Taylor & Francis or Elsevier. Uh, there you have to be a little bit careful because they also publish good journals and they also publish so-so journals. But the advantage with these journals is that in their web page for all the journals they publish, they give you the impact factor. Impact factor is not necessarily the only indicator of good journals. There could be journals with lesser impact factors, but they might be publishing good papers. 
but overall it is still a good indication of a good journal if possible you should choose a journal with higher impact factor okay sir what do you think whether it is good idea to publish the journal online or go for so it is always a good idea to publish in journals uh, which have uh, a print publication most of them also allow the article to be available online online only and sometimes uh, they they are also called open access uh, there are good open access journals i am not saying all open access journals are bad but uh, there are online only uh, open access journals which will ask you to pay a large amount of money and then they will publish without doing a proper uh, job of peer review in such journals you should not publish the quality of a journal is in the quality of the peer review that you receive how much comments you got how carefully somebody went through your paper how much of feedback they gave you and how difficult it is to convince the reviewer and publish if the process is harder probably you are publishing a good paper thank you okay fine thank you very thank much thank you goodbye